Hey everybody, just back here with another video. So I just, um, this is actually from yesterday where Pierre Paul Yev was talking about housing supply is down, well the demand is up. I've covered this a little bit on my channel, but here's Pierre Paul Yev just breaking it down a little bit more. So we'll have a look at this video, it's just a couple minutes long, and then we will talk about it after like usual. Mark was saying housing costs have gone up. They were up what, before COVID, they were up even more since. If, if we build a lot of homes, will it bring the prices tumbling down, will it burst the bubble? Um, a bubble is when the price is just driven up by speculation and no fundamental market demand underneath it. Just people speculating that it will be worth more one day, so I'm buying it in the hopes that someone else will buy, pay more later on. I don't think that's what we have. I think we have real demand for housing that underlies the price. That's the problem. We have way more demand than we have supply. I can't, no government can sort of snap his fingers and and reverse those mathematics overnight and you know cause housing prices to come crashing down. It will be a, uh, a yearly, year after year improvement by adding homes faster than we add people and growing take-home pay faster than we grow housing costs, that affordability will return. So this, you know, if I could make a graph out of it, I mean, right now, this is housing supply and this is housing demand, right? We need to get it like this so that, and that, by the way, it won't have, you know, when you do that, it's still going to take time to close the gap. It's still going to take time to close the gap for the number of homes to catch up with the number of people. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, if Polya becomes prime minister, I wouldn't panic and sell your house because I, it's not going to go come tumbling down. But what we will do is make, make it possible for, for wages to grow faster than housing costs, for home, home building to grow fast, to, to go faster than population growth. And over the medium term, we can make housing attainable. And in the long term, I think we can again make it affordable as it was 10 years ago. Thank you. Yeah, so I mean, not uh, too much of a shock about what he said there, right? I mean, it's, I know a lot of people have high hopes for Pierre Polyev and, you know, that he'll fix things, you know, really, really quickly as soon as he gets into office. But, you know, the the, the reality of it is no matter who gets in, they're, it's going to take a little bit of time, right? So it, like he said, it's year after year growth, year after year production, year after year of, hey, let's control and manage the border and eventually things get better. I mean, he's right about that. Right. And like you said, too, you don't need to panic and buy and sell your house when he becomes prime minister, because it's not just going to be like, OK, this eight hundred thousand houses, thousand dollar house is now going to be four hundred thousand dollars just over time, because there's going to be a lot more supply and not just the demand. The prices will even out. Now, that being said, they still have to find a way to build affordable housing right now. Again, that's not really. I mean, affordable housing, like you don't want the government to become too involved. You just want there to be contractors so they can build, you know, smaller, you know, bungalows for starting families. Then you would want, you know, these big gigantic houses that are going to start at five, six hundred thousand dollars, right? Because that's, you know, that's that does not possible for a young family to then own that home. It's just an unrealistic goal. They need a, a smaller starter home. I haven't really heard him talk about that. I hopefully I hope he does because that is something that he should he can't really enforce it, but he can definitely give some you know some tax breaks. Hey, you want to build starter homes? We'll give you tax breaks or we'll give you some sort of incentive to do it. So there's ways he could do it. He just hasn't really talked about that yet. But he is right about what he said about this taking some time, right? It's not gonna just happen overnight. Another thing I wanted to show you guys here was a newly released StatsCan data shows that real incomes plummeted in 2022 as prices rose three times faster than incomes. That is the consequences of uh, the NDP liberal in inflationary spending and taxes. And that's true. And then, you know, there's a little chart here. Inflation's been up 6.8%. And that's two years ago, by the way. And wages are only up 2.5%. So it's, a, it's basically stagnant, right? It's, it's such essentially a 4.3% pay cut for the average person, right? Which let's just round it up to 5%. That doesn't sound like much, but 5%, like if your paycheck's $1,000 and you're getting a 5% pay cuts, it's now $950, right? And if you're only making $1,000 every two weeks, that $50 kind of comes in handy, 
that $50 can determine you whether you can save 50 bucks or just basically live paycheck to paycheck. Even if you can save 50 bucks, it's still not great, but at least it's something. Um, that ability you know, to save that $100 a month is now gone for most people. And it's because of these, you know, inflation, but not, not only that, but also just the stagnant of wages, right? Again, they're letting in so many people and yes, they produced a lot of jobs after COVID, but they're low paying jobs. It's like, okay, so you can go and make 16, 17 bucks an hour and pay 1500 for rent. Like that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't help people. Right. So we do need to, again, manage the border. We need to create more jobs. If you're going to have people come in here, have entrepreneurs come in here. They can start their business. People can get hired and grow the economy that way. That would be one idea that I think one thing that I would really like to see uh, them do. Instead of just maybe closing the border, you say, hey, listen, we're only letting in doctors, nurses, entrepreneurs, things that we really need. Um, and then once we fix things, then we can start looking into, okay, can we slowly reopen the border a little bit? Do we have enough infra infrastructure? Basically, can the conservatives do enough math to manage the company or the country properly? Because apparently the, the Trudeau-led coalition backed by Jugmeet Singh can't do a single bit of math. Or maybe this is all just being done on purpose, like I keep saying it is. Because again, folks, it's it's very clear. There's only two things, one of two things going on here. These are the most incompetent people in the world, or it's on purpose and they're evil. I think you all know which one I think it, I think it is. Let me know in the comment section, do you think they're stupid or do you, do you agree with me? Do you think they're evil? What do you think about wages being stagnant, basically? And this isn't just since 2022. This has been happening you know, since I was an adult, right? I mean, you could go, come out of high school back in 2007, 2008, and it wasn't that hard to find a job for 17, 18 bucks an hour. Well, if you're coming out of high school now, rent's doubled and the wages you can go and find somewhere for eight, 17, 18 bucks, maybe you can get 19 or 20 bucks even then, right? If rent's doubled and wages are only going up 2.5%, that's not very helpful. So what do you guys think about that situation? And also, what do you think about the border situation? Do you think that it needs to be better managed? Do you think that we just need to temporarily close it just until we you know, rebuild the country again? Uh, let me know what you guys think. I always enjoy reading and reacting to your comments. Sorry if I do get behind on them. Sometimes there is a lot, but I do still appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, please also don't forget if you haven't already liked and subscribed this video to please do that. It really helps grow this channel. Thanks so much again for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with another video.